Hello, my name is Hetty and this is my um, listening project, meeting 9. Okay, part 1, Seti project, are we alone? Hello everyone, is everyone here? Well, let's get started. We were talking last time about the possibility of other intelligent life in the universe. So, that's where I want to pick up today. Today, we look at the SETI project, that's the search for extraterrestrial intelligence. This is a project to look for signs of intelligent life on other planets in the universe. So first, why do we think that there may be other intelligence life in the universe? Well, it's because there are many, many other galaxies in the universe that could support life. We on Earth, we are one planet going around one star, but our, our galaxies has approximately 400 billion other stars. Stars that may, be, may have other planets. We are intelligent being could live and throughout the universe there are at least 100 billion. That's 100 billion other galaxies. So most scientists think that somewhere in this 100 billion galaxies there must be other planets that are similar to our earth and that at least one of those planets has other intelligence being we just have to locate them now how does the SETI project search for life the SETI project searches searches for life using large radio telescope. This radio telescope search for radio signals. In space, they are looking for signals that could be from other intelligence beings. We hope, we hope that somewhere, there are intelligent beings who are looking for us, who are sending out a signal. Perhaps they are asking the same question we ask. Are we alone? Is there anyone else out there? Now, in my opinion, this is some of the most exciting scientific research being done today. Why? Why is, so, why is it so exciting? Well, I think that locating other intelligent life, if and when this happens, will completely change. How we think about ourselves and about the universe, just imagine knowing that there are other beings out there that we are not alone. So I think this is one of the most interesting areas to investigate. So the city project tries to, so the city project tries, sorry. So I think this is one of the most interesting areas to investigate. So, the SETI project tries to locate intelligent beings in the universe by searching for radio signals from space. But, why radio signals? Well, there are two reasons radio signals are better. First, they travel fairly, they travel very quickly. The second, they have a long range. They can go very far in the space. So, how fast do radio signal travel? Well, they travel very quickly at the speed of light. So, for example, the nearest galaxy Alpha Centauri is approximately 4.2 light years away. Traveling at the speed of light, it takes 4 years for a radio signal to reach us. On the other hand, past fastest rocket only travels about 10 miles per second at that speed. It would take 60,000 years to reach Alpha Centauri galaxy. So, radio signals are, defi are definitely faster. Now, what is the range of radio signals? Well, they have a very long range. They could travel through several galaxies to reach Earth. 
radio signals can also travel through space dust and other things floating around in the space. So if any intelligence be beings and other galaxies are sending radio signals, there there's a good chance that the signals can reach Earth. I see. Equation? Yes. Why don't we just send a rocket to look for intelligent life? Good questions. I'm glad to I'm glad you asked. Well, for one thing, they are much slower, unlike radio signals. Rockets can't travel at the speed of light. Also, they don't have very wide range. In addition, you are restricted to looking in one direction you point the rocket in one direction and go that way. But we can search for radio signals in every part of the universe, not restricting ourselves to one direction. So overall, you can see why searching for radio signal is better. Okay, so that's all for today. Next time, we'll talk about this and talk about what we will do when we hear when we hear a signal wait sorry when we hear a signal a very important question so think about about that what should we do when we hear when we hear a signal from another intelligent being until then have a good week i'll see you next time Question, question part one. One, what is SETI project? The SETI project that the search for extraterrestrial intelligence. This is a project to look for signs of intelligence life on other planets in the universe. Second, two, why do the scientists think there are another planet? Another intelligence being good life in the universe? The answer is it's because there are many, many other galaxies in the universe that could support life. We on Earth, we are one planet going around one star, but our galaxies have has approximately 400 billion other stars. Stars that may have other planets. We are intelligence being could live and throughout the universe there are at least 100 billions that's 100 billions other galaxies so most scientists think that somewhere in this 100 billion galaxies 100 billion galaxies there must be other planets that are similar to our earth 3 why do the scientists not use the rocket to look for the intelligence being life in the universe? For one thing, they they are much slower. I mean the the rocket, they are much slower. Unlike radio signals, rocket can travel at the speed of light. Also, they don't have a very wide range. In addition, you are restricted to looking in one direction you point the, ro the rocket in one direction and go that way but we can search for radio signals in every part of the universe no restricting ourselves to one direction for what does the what does the reason the SETI use radio signal there are two reasons radio signals are better first they travel very quickly. The second, they have a long range. They can go very far into space. Part 2. The ants and the grasshopper. The ants were spending a fine winter's day drawing grain collected in the summertime. A grasshopper, perishing with famine, passed by and earnestly begged for a little food. The ants inquired of him, "Why did you not? Why did you not treasure up food during the su during the summer?" He replied, "I had not leisure enough. I passed the days in singing." 
they then said in their region, If you are foolish enough to sing all the summer, you must then surprise to bed in the winter. Part 3. The Legend of Sleepy, Ho Sleepy Hollow I s Because this is very long, long paragraph, so I summarize this text, this paragraph. So, the legend of Sleepy Hollow found among the papers of the late Der Detroit Knickerbocker, Knickerbocker, a pleasing land of drowsy, drowsy hats it was, of dreams that wave before the half-shut eye, of a guy castles, castles in the clouds, the that pass. Sorry. Sorry, I replied again. Found among the papers of the late De Dietrich Knickerbocker. A pleasing land of drowsy had it was, of dreams that wave before the half shut eye. Half shut eye of a gay castle in the clouds that pass. Forever flashing round a summer sky. Castles of indolence. Some of the damsels mounted on pillow pillions behind their favorite swain, and their light-hearted laughter mingling with the clatter of hoofs echoed along the silent woodlands, sounding fainter and fainter until they gradually died away and the late scans of noise and frolic was all silent and deserted some some say that the place was bewitched by a high by a high german doctor during the early days of the settlement other that an old man indian chief chief the prophet or wizard of his tribe held his post there before the country was discovered by from discovered by from the listless listless repos of the place and the peculiar character of its inhabitants who are descendants from the original dutch settled, settlers this sequestered clan has long been known by the name of Sleepy Hollow, and its rustic lads are called the Sleepy. All the epi epitaphs on the tombstone are sauntering with a whole beefy, beefy of them along the banks of the Adjansons Mill, Mill Pond, while the more bashful country Bumskins hug sheep silly back and think his superior elegance and address. How we would figure among them in the churchyard, between services on Sundays, gathering grapes for them from the wild vines that overrun the surrounding trees, reciting for their amusement. In one corner stood a huge bag of wool, ready to be spun. In another, a quantity of linty wool will see just from the loom. Ears of Indian corn and strings of dried apples and peaches hung in gay festoons along, along the walls, mingled with the gold of red papers. And a door left ajar gave him a peep into the best parlor, where the claw footed chairs and dark mahogany tables shone like mirrors. And the runes, with their accompanying shuffle and tongs, glistened from their covert of asparagus tops, mock orange and conch cells decorated the man mantelpiece strings of various colored birds eggs 
were suspended above it. A great ostrich egg was hung from the center of the room, and a corner cupboard, knowingly left open, displays, displayed immense treasures of old silver and, well, made of china. I would not have it imagined, however, that he was one of the of those group potentates potentates of the school who joy in the smart of their subject. On the contrary, he admin administrated justice with discriminations rather than severity, taking the burden of the back of the weak and laying it on and laying it on those of the strong. Over a deep black part of the stream, not far from the church, was firmly thrown a wooden bridge, the road that led to it, and the bridge itself, were thickly shaded by overhanging trees, which cast a gloom about it. Even in the daytime, but occasioned, but occasioned, occasioned, a fearful darkness at night. The sun, in short, square skirt coats, with rows of stupendous brass buttons, and their hair generally quiet, vivid, in the fashion of the time, especially if they could procure an oil skin for the purpose. It being esteemed throughout the country as the potent nourisher and strength strengthener of the hair, but if there was a pleasure in all this, while snugly cuddling in the chimney, chimney corner at the chamber that was all of a ruddy glow, ruddy glow from the cra crackling wood fire, and where, of course, the, no spectre there to show its face, it was dearly forecast by the terrors of his subs subs subsequent walk homeward, where in his own mind he completely carried away the palm from the person. To the night was dark and dismal, yet the form of the unknown might now in some degree be ascertained. It is true, an old farmer who had been who had been down the New York on a visit several years after, and from whom this account of the ghostly adventure was received was received broke home the intelligence that in friend was still alive, that he had left the neighborhood partly through fear of the goblin and Hans von Hans Hans von Ripper, and partly in the mortifications at having been suddenly dismissed by the Harris, that he had changed in that he had changed his quarters to a distant part of the country, had kept school and studied law at the same time, had been admitted to the bar, turned politician, electronic. Alexioneret, written for the newspapers, and finally had been made of just a justice of the ten pound court. And there was an old gentleman who shall be nameless, being to reach a uh, mind here, to be likely mentioned, who, in the in the battle of White Plains. Being an excellent master of defense, parried a musket ball with small sword, in so much that he absolutely felt it whiz round the blood, and glanced off at the hilt, in proof of which he was ready at any time to show the sword, with the hilt at a little bent, broom, who had. A degree of fruit chivalry in his nature would fain have 
carried matters to open welfare and half settles their pretensions to the lady, according to the mode of those most conscious and simple reasoners, the knight errant of yore, by single combat. But Ichabod was too conscious, conscious of the superior might of his adversary to enter the list against him. He had overhead a boat of bones that he would double the schoolmaster up and lay him on a shelf of his own schoolhouse, and he was to worry, to worry, to give him an opportunity. From his half itinerant life, also, he was a kind tra a, of traveling gazette, carrying the whole budget of local gossip from house to house, so that his appearance was always greeted with satisfaction. It was connected with the tragical story of the unfortunate Andre, who had been taken prison by hard by, and was universally known by the name of Major Andres III. Andres III. We had much ado to maintain his seat, sometimes sleeping on one side, sometimes on another, and sometimes jolted on the high ridge of his horse backbone, backbone, with a violence that he fairly feared would cleave him asunder. Some some seem to have but one vulnerable, vulnerable point and door of access, while others have a thousand avenues and may be captured in a thousand different ways. Farther, farther, or he beheld great fields of Indian corn, with its golden earth peeping from their leafy converts and holding out the promise of cakes and hasty pod pudding and hasty pudding and the yellow pumpkins lying beneath them turning up the their fair round belly bellies up to the sun and giving ample prospects of the most luxurious of pies and anon he paced the fragrant buckwheat fields braiding the odor on the behave behave as, and as he beheld them, soft and antific, anticipations stole over his mind of dandly slapjacks, well buttered and garnished with honey and treacle, by the delicate little dream, little dimple hand of Cortina van Tassel. Besides, there is no encouragement for ghosts in most of our village. For they have scarcely had time to finish their first snap and turn themselves in their graves before the surviving friends have traveled away from the neighborhood, so that when they turn out at night to walk their rounds, they have no acquaintance, acquaintance, acqui, acquaintance left to call upon Ichabod, who had no relish for this strange midnight companion and bethought himself of the adventures of whose her encouragement of the poor pedagogue or a mere sham. To secure her conquest of his rival, certain it is, the place still continues under the sway of some waiting power that holds a spell over over the minds of the root of the good people, causing them to walk in a continual continual reverie. Ichabod, on the contrary, had to win with had to win his way to the heart of country conquest. Bested with a labyrinth of pins and capri capriches, capriches, which were forever presenting new difficulties and impediments, and he had 
to encounter a host of fearful adversaries of real flesh and blood. The numerous rustic admirers who visit every portal to her heart, keeping a watchful and angry eye upon each other, but ready to fly out in the common cause against any new competitor. It stands on a knoll, surrounded by locusts, trees, and lofty elms, from among which, which its descent, white forest walls shine modest fruit, like Christian purity beaming through the state of retirement. retirement. Something, however, I fear me, must have gone wrong. I fear me must have gone wrong, for he certainly shall sell it forth. After not very great interval, with an air quiet, desolate, and cap fallen, the mysterious event caused much speculation at the church on the following Sunday. He knows when a thousand common hearts is therefore entitled to some renown. But he who keeps undisputed sway over the heart of a conquest is indeed a hero, as he was a backcolor, and in nobody's depth, nobody troubled his head any more about him. The school was removed to a different quarter of the hollow, and another pedagogue reigned. Rain, in his teeth, he assists the farmers occasionally in the lighter labors of their farms, helped to make hay, to make hay, mended the fence, took the horse to water, drove the cows from pasture, and cut wood for the winter, for the winter fire. There was something, there was something in the moody and doped. Silence of his patronatious companions that was mysterious and appalling. Could that girl have been many playing of any of her cook with these treats? I recollect that when a stripling, my first exploit in squirrel shooting was the was in a grove of tall walnut trees that sheds one side of the valley. He had three or four, four born companions who regarded him as their model, and at the end of whom he scoured the country, attending very every scan of fit of merriment for miles round. Boys struck out all the neighbor, neighboring country, bones with the gallop, galloping Hessians, Bones with the galloping Hessians now quickened his teeth in hopes of leaving him behind. It was soon fearfully accounted for. It's a great triumph of skill to gain the former, but a still greater proof of generalship to maintain possessions of letter. For man must battle for his fortress at every door and window. I want bread and time to discuss this banquet, banquet as it deserves and I'm too eager to get on with my story that all this might not be too onerous when the process oh, sorry that all this might not be too onerous on the process of his rustic patrons who are apt to consider that cost of schooling a grievous burden, and schoolmasters as mere drones he had various ways of rendering himself both useful and agreeable. Agreeable. Itabot prided himself upon his dancing as much as upon his vocal powers. In cold weather, weather, he was distinguished by a fur cap, surmounted with a flaunting folk's tail, and when the folk at the country gathering described 
this well-known crest at a distance, whisking about a mouse squad of horse riders. They always stood by for a squaw. They are like those little looks. Sorry, they are little those little looks of still water, which border a rapid streams where we may see the straw and a bubble and bubble riding quietly at anchor, and slow or slowly revolving in their mimic barber. And this turbot. And this turbot and this sort by the rise of the passing current, but all sides he behold fast store of apples, some hanging the oppressive uplands on the trees, some gathered into baskets and barrels for the market, others heap it up in rich piles for the tither press. This is perhaps the reason why we so seldom hear of ghosts except in our long established Dutch communities. I had wandered into a noon time when all nature's peculiar quiet and was started startled by the roar of my own gun as is as it broke the Sabbath. Stillness around and was prolonged and reverberated by the angry echoes, Master Hendrik Hudson, room in one part of the road leading the, to the church was found, the saddle trampled in the dirt, the tracks of horses' hoofs deeply detained, detained, dented in the road, and evidently at furious speed, were straight to the bridge beyond which, on the bank of a broad part of the brook, where the water ran deep and black, was found that head of the unfortunate eatable and close beside it a shattered pumpkin. Another of his sources of fearful pleasures was to pass long winter evening with the old Dutch wives as they sat spinning in the, by the fire with a row of apples roasting and spluttering along the heart, the heart, and listen to their marvelous tales of ghosts and goblins and haunted fields, and haunted groves, and haunted bridge, and haunted houses, and particular, particularly of the handles ho headless horsemen, or galloping hessians of the hollow, as they something called him. All this, however, we were terrors, were mere terrors of the night, phantoms of the mind that walk in darkness. And though we had, he had seen many, seen many specters in this time, and been more than once based by Satan in diverse shapes, in his lonely perambulations, Yet they light put an end to all these evils. And he would have passed a pleasant life for it, of it, in despite of the devils and all his fruits, if his path had not been crossed by a being that causes more perplexity to mortal men than ghosts, goblins, and the whole race on which is put together, and that was a woman. Indeed, certain of the most authentic historic historians of those parts, who have been carefully in collecting and collecting the floating facts concerning these specters, allege that the body of the trooper, trooper having been buried in the churchyard, churchyard the ghost right forth to the scans of of battle in nightly quest of his head, and that the racing speed with which he sometimes passes along the hollow, like a midnight blast, is owing to his being belated, and in a hurry to get back to the churchyard before daybreak. The tale was the tale was told of 
old brower, a most heretical disbeliever in ghosts. How he made the horseman returning from his foray into Sleepy Hollow, and was obligate, obligate to get up behind him. How they galloped over, over, bush, over bush and break, over hill and swamp, until they reached the bridge. When the horseman suddenly turned into a skeleton, threw old Brower into the brook and sprang away over the treetops with a clap of thunder. The old country wives, however, who are the best judges of these matters, maintains to, to this day that Ichabod was spirited, spirited away by supernatural means, and is, it is a favorite story often told about the neighborhoods round to the winter evening fire. They hear it, his he heard the peaceful domains, he heard the peaceful domains, smoked out his singing school by stopping up the chimney, broke into the schoolhouse at night, in spite of its formidable fastenings of white and window sticks of vidi with and window sticks and turned everything tops turvy so that the poor schoolmaster began to think all the witches in the country held their meeting meetings here. There was a Hannes Cockrobin, the favorite game of stripling sportsmen, with its loud querulous note, and the twittering blackbirds flying in sable clouds, and the golden winged woodpecker with his crimson crest. His broad black gorget, a spl and splendid plumage, and the tender bird, with its red tipped wings and yellow tipped tail and its little montero cap of feathers and the blue jay that noisy coxcomb in his gay light blue coat and white underclothes screaming and chattering nodding and bowing and bowing and pretending to be on good terms with every songster on the of the grove it was often his delight, after his school was dismissed in afternoon, to stretch himself on the rich bed of clover bordering the little brook that whimpered by his schoolhouses, schoolhouse, and their corn over old mother, mother's, mother's, their full tales, until the gathering dust of evening made the print page is mere mist before his eyes. In this enterprise, however, he had more more real difficulties than generally felt felt to the lot of a knight errant of yore, who seldom had anything but giants, enchanters, fairy dragons, and such like easily conquered adver adversaries to content with and had to make his way merely through gates of iron and brass. And walls of Adam, adamant to the castle keep, where the lady of his heart was conf confined, all which he achieved easily as a man would carve his way to the center of a Christmas pie. And then the lady gave him her hand as a matter of course. He says it by the pommel and, and the fort to hold it firm, but in vain, and had just time to save himself by clasping old gunpowder round the neck. When the saddle fell to the earth, he heard it trampled under foot by his pursuer. Hard by the farmhouse was a fast barn that might have served for a church, every window and crevice of which seemed bursting forth with the treasures of the farm. The fell 
The flail which was busily resounding within it from morning to night. Swallows and Martin's kims twittering about the eaves, and rows of pigeons, some with one eye turned up, as if watching the weather. Some with, some with their heads under their wings or buried on their bosoms, and others swelling and cooing and bowing about their dreams, were enjoying the sunshine on the roof. As he approached the streams, his heart began to trump his moan up. However, all his resolutions gave his horse half a score of kicks in the trips, an attempt to dash briskly across the bridge, but instead of starting forward, the fear first old man made the lateral, lateral movement and ran broadside against the fence. He came clattering up to the school door with an invention to eat about to attend a merry, making or quieting frolic. To be held that evening at mine here fun the cells, and having delivered in delivered his message message with that air of importance and effort at fine language which a negro is apt to display of on petty pretty embassies of the kind he does he dashed over the broad, and was seen scampering away up to the hollow, full of the importance and hurry of the miss of his missions. It was toward evenings that each about arrived at the castles of the here Fantasel, which he found thronged with the pride and the flower of at Jackson's country of country old farmers spares lettering face trace in homes hoods hood and verses whose stockings, huge shoes and magnificent pelter buckles. She wore the ornaments of of pure yellow gold which her great great grandmother had broke over from Sardam. The tempting stonemaker of the olden time, and with with dull, uh, provokingly short petticoat, to display the prettiest foot and ankle in the country round. Books were flung aside without being put away on themselves, in inkstands were overturned, overturned benches thrown down. And the whole school was turned loose an hour before usual time, bursting forth like a legion of young imps, yelping and racketing about the green in joy at the at their early emancipations. He wrote with short stirrups, which broke his knees and nearly up to the pommel at the of the saddle. He sharp elbows stuck out like grasshoppers. He carried his whip perpendicularly in his hands, like a scepter, and as his horse joked on. The motion of his arms was not unlike the flapping of pair of wings. I mentioned this peacefully spot with all possible lot of it, for it is sucks in such little retired Dutch valley, found here and there embarrassment in the great state of New York, that populations, manners, and custom remain fixed, while great tolerant migration of the New York, that populations, manners, and custom customs remain fixed, while the great torrent of migration and improvement, which making which is making such incessant change in other parts of their restless country. Sweepy by them unobserved, his head was small and flat at top, with huge ears 
ears, large green glassy eyes, and a long snip nose, so that it looked like a weather cook perched upon the spin his spindle neck to tell which way the wind blew. It it is said by some to be the ghost of a Hessian trooper, whose hat whose head had been carried away by a cannonball in some nameless battle during the Revolutionary War, and who is ever an anon seen by the country folk hurrying along in the gloom of night, as if on the wings of the wind, as the interrupter intra and rap and raptor Ichabod fancied all this, and as he rode, he rolled his great green eyes over the fat meadows lands, the rich fields of wheat, of rye, of buckwheat, and India co Indian corn, and the orchard burdens with three fruit, which surrounded the warm tenement, tenement of Van Tassel. His heart yearned after the damsel who was the, to inherit the stomach domains and his imagination expanded with the idea how they might be readily turned into cash and the money invested in immense tracts of wild land, single palace with in with wild wilderness. A great elm tree spread its bird branches over it at the foot of which bubbled up cherry bubble up cherry a spring of the softest and sweetest water in a little wet form of a barrel and then stove sparkling away through the grass to a neighboring brook the bubble the bubble along among alders and dwarf willows he had in fact been a favorite steed of his masters the caloric van river ripper who has a furious rider and had infused, very probably, probably, some of his own spirit into the animal for, animal for old and broken down as he looked. There was more of the lurking devil in him than in any young filly in the country. The chief part of the stories. However, turned upon the favorite specter of Sleepy Hollow, the headless horseman, who had been heard several times of late, patrolling the country, and it was said, threatened that that dirt of his horse nightly among the graves in the churchyard. Those while are busy, those while the busy dame bustles about the house or played her spinning wheel at one end of the pizza. Honest Bolt would sit smoking his evening pipe at the other, watching the achievements of a little wooden warrior who, armed with swords and its hands, was most valiantly fighting the wind on the pinnacle of the barn. He would delight them equally by his anecdotes with of its craft, and of the direful omens and protentous sight and sounds in the air, which prevailed in the earlier times of Connecticut, and would frighten them woefully with speculations upon comets and shooting stars, and with the alarming, alar alarming fact the world did absolutely turn round, and that they were hope the time to see Turfy. He had, however, a happy mixture of pliability and prevence, perseverance, fa sorry, perseverance in his nature. He was in form and spirit like supple G D F K Lighting, but though, though he bent. He never broke, and true, he bowed beneath the slightest pressures yet. 
the moment it was away, jerk. He was as erect and carried his hat as high as ever his only resource on such occasions, either to drown through or drive away evil spirit, was to sing some tunes and good people of Sleepy Hollow, as they sat by their doors of an evening, were often filled with awe at hearing his nasal melody, in linked sweetness, long drawn out, floating from the distant hill, or along the dusky road, he affirmed that on returning that, returning one night from the neighbor, neighboring village of Sing Sing, she had been overtaken by his midnight trooper that he, that he had offered to raise with him for a bowl of punch, of punch and should have won it too. For there the field beat the goblin horse all hollow. But just as they came into the church perch, the Hessian bottles and vanished in a place of fire. The revenue from his school was small and would have scarcely the scarcely sufficient, sufficient to furnish with him daily bread, for he was a huge feeder and too lank, had the delaying powers of an, an anaconda. But to help out his maintenance, he was, according to, the, to country customs in two sports, boarded and lodged at the house of the farmers, whose children he instructed. He was the admiration of all the Negroes, who, having gathered of all age and size, from the farm and neighborhood, stood farming a pyramid of shining black faces at every door and window, gazing with delight at the skin, rolling there with bowl, with eye, white eyeballs, and showing grinning rows of ivory from ear to ear, that he might make his appearance before his mistress in the true styles of cavalier. He brought a horse from the farmer, with whom he was domic domiciliated a choler choleric old Dutchman of the name of Hans van Riefer, and thus gallantly mounted, issued forth like a knight errant in quest of adventures. Now and then, too, lo the long drawn crowing of a cook accidentally awakened would sound far far off from some farmhouse away among the hills but it was like a dreaming sound in his her in his ear Brombones, however was the hero of the scans having come to the gathering on his favorite steed daredevil the creatures like himself for full or of metal or and mischief, and which no one but himself could manage. When the dance was at the was at an end, when the dance was at an end, Ichabod was attracted to a note of the Sager folk who, with old feet, found tassels, sat smoking at one end of the pizza. Gossiping over former times and drawing out long stories about the war. Sometimes his crew would be heard dashing along past the farmhouse at midnight, with whoop and hello like a troop of dawn Cossacks, and the old dams startled out of their sleep would listen for a moment, till the Harris curry had clattered by. And then exclaim, "Aye, there goes brown bones and hing. Aye, there goes brown bones and his gang." From hence the low murmur of his pupil's voice, conning over their lessons, might be heard in a drowsy summer's day, like the hum of a beaver behaved. Interrupted now, 
and then by the authoritative voice of the masters, in the tone of minutes or comment, or per adventures by the appalling sounds of the beard, as the yurt some thirty loiterer along the that flowery that flowery path of knowledge. Then as he winded his way by swamp and stream and awful woodland to the farmhouse where he happened to be quartered. Every sound of nature's at the witching hour fluttered his excited imaginations. The moan of the whip poor will from the hillside, the burning cry of the tree toad that that her binger of storm that the dreary hooting of the screech owl to the sudden rustling in the ticket of birds frightened from their moves from their roost the whole neck verse abounds with local tales haunted spots and twilight superstitions superstitions star shoots and matters glares oftener across the valleys that in any other part of the country and the nightmare with her whole ninefold seems to make in the favorite skins of her gambles many dismal tales were told about funeral trains and mourning cries and wailing hurt and seen about the great tree where the unfortunate major andre was taken and which stood in the neighborhood the schoolmaster is generally a man of some importance in the female circle of a rural, rural neighborhood, being considered a kind of idol, gentleman like personage of fasty superior taste and accomplishment to the rogue's country swain, and indeed inferior in learning only the, uh, to the person. There was the story of Duvu Martling, a large blue breeded Dutchman, who had nearly taken a British figurate frigate with an old iron nine pounder from the mute breastwork, only that his gun burst at the sixth discharge. It was a fa it was the very waiting time of night that Ichabod, heavy hearted and crazed fallen, pursued his travels home homewards. Along the sides of the lovely hills which arise above Tarry Town, and which he had traversed so, so cheerily in the afternoon, certain it is his advances were signals for rival candidates to retire, who felt no inclinations to cross a lion in his armors, insomuch that when his horse was seen tied to fun tassels. Howling on a Sunday Sunday night, a sure sign that his master was courting, or as it is turned, sparking within all the all other sweeters passed by in despair, and carried the war into other quarters. He was broad soldered and double jointed, with short, with short curly black hair. At a bluff, but no unpleasant countenance, countenance. Having having a mingled air of fond and arrogance from his Herculean frame and great powers of limb, he had received by nicknames of broom bones, by which he was universally known. Thank you.